What's your biggest problem with the results? Well, you mentioned Bill Russell. It's good that you did. Wilt, at least people see in those grainy color, you know, um, footage of like when he was the Lakers won championships, at least in the early 70s. So you feel like he's more of a modern player. Um, from what you just saw on that list, the yeah. way that's listed, the fact that Kareem is so low. Kareem and LeBron, it's not clear who's going to go down as number two behind Jordan. I think it's hilarious, by the way, that still Stephen A. Jordan gets over 70% of the vote, even with all these young players' recency biases. But I'll tell you what. Where's Larry Bird in all this? He doesn't even make the list, even honorable mentions. People forget, and history's sort of been rewritten in terms of revisionism of Larry Bird in that era. Like, Magic is considered greater because he won five championships to Bird's three. Mm -hmm. And he became the best player in the world, uh, um, you know, at a later date than Bird did, so a little more recent. But when they were both in their primes, Bird was better than Magic. Like, it was really close, but he was the one who won three straight MVPs. Bird was as good a passer as any. If you want to say Magic Johnson's the greatest passer ever, okay, fine. Bird is right there. Bird was an amazing rebounder. He's an incredible scorer, shooter, the whole thing. And when he joined the Celtics, they turned that, they were like a 20-something win team. They went to a 60-something win team, adding a rookie, Larry Bird. Larry Bird is like the forgotten man. He was Michael Jordan before there was Michael Jordan. He was like the alpha of the NBA. And then Jordan showed up and was even better. But people just forget about Bird. And then the other omissions... Stephen A, where, where is, I mean, Will, you go back, and Bill Russell, you go back, where's Shaq? People forgot about Shaq. Shaquille O'Neal was completely unstoppable. So that's my beef. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think about Shaq in that regard because the first order of business I think about is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, listen, you know, you see stuff like this, and you just wonder why are people even allowed to vote. What's there to talk about? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, 19-time All-Star. He's the greatest <laughs> scorer in the history of Can you basketball. you say that again? How many times All-Star? A 19-time yeah. All <laughs> All-Star. He's the greatest scorer in the history of basketball. He's the all-time leading scorer in the history of basketball. The greatness of Michael Jordan, who averaged over 30 about nine times or whatever, could an eclipse Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he is the only person in the history of basketball, and I didn't even bring up the, the six rings, by the way. He's the only person in the history of basketball that is associated with one unstoppable move. From the time he was a kid to the time he was old and about to retire in his 40s, he is the only person that to the day he walked away from basketball had a move that no one ever could stop in his entire career. Stephen ever. A. Stephen and oh, by a. the way, he has as many championships as Michael Jordan. So to me, it's egregious that he only got 1.7%. And when I think about Larry Bird, here's what I think about. LeBron James is the greatest small forward that ever played basketball, in my opinion. Right. He's the greatest, all right? But I don't want LeBron over Bird in the last two minutes. I want to give it to Bird. I want the ball in Larry Bird's hands in the last two minutes. Because before there was Jordan, there was magic with Bird. And there is no one who went against Bird, that Bird did not strike fear in. I didn't say respect, because they're all respected, but fear. You were petrified in going up against Larry Bird, because at six feet eight, all he needed to do most of the time was get the shot off without it being blocked. And you were literally praying it didn't go in, and because by the way, he was that great of a sniper. Like LeBron, his court vision was, un you could say it's not unparalleled because magic too, right? But, but Bird could pass it practically like magic and had that kind of court vision at the small forward power forward position, but then he could shoot it a whole lot better than magic. And by the way, Bird would average 10, 11 rebounds a year too. He was a basketball genius and three consecutive MVPs. He ran the NBA. Larry Bird ran the NBA, the alpha, and he was contemporaries with Magic and better in his prime. Sorry, even if that have a better career. That's one. Two, Kareem. Stephen A., the reason Kareem had the unstoppable move with the skyhook is because when he was in college, they outlawed the dunk. Know why? Because of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, then Lou Alcindor. When you Count in college. The fact that he had three championships in college as maybe the greatest college player who ever lived, then turns pro, and you mentioned the all-time scoring leader, 19-time All-Star, six-time champion. When you take accomplishments over a basketball career, who was better than Kareem?
You know, and, and when all is said and done, I know Ma Michael Jordan's the greatest basketball player who ever lived. The number two, like, he took that really from Kareem. Guys, also, the other thing we had uh, tied for the fifth spot, Kevin Durant. Is he already a top five player all time? Well, he's a top five talent. When you, can look, when you look at what transpired, what, what, what Kevin Durant is made of, he's damn near seven feet tall with a handle and a J. He's a sniper extraordinaire. He's a career 27-point-per-game scorer. He could have played in any era. He's a scoring machine. That's what he brings to the table. So he's definitely a top five talent. The problem is, is that because he didn't win a chip until he got to Golden State, you have people who would be inclined to disregard him because Magic didn't go, I'm sorry, Bird didn't go anywhere. And, you know, Kareem ultimately was moved and went from Milwaukee to L.A. And Jordan didn't go anywhere. And Kobe didn't go anywhere. You look at it and you say people are holding against KD that he left OKC to go yeah. to Golden State, which might explain why there's all this noise about the likelihood of him leaving to mm -hmm. depart for other pastures. Yeah. I, I would say um, KD, you're right, is a talent. He's a player really without a weakness. Like what he doesn't he doesn't pass the ball like LeBron or, or Magic or Bird or even the Greek freak or someone like that. But he can pass the ball. He can put the ball on the floor. He can score from anywhere on the court. He doesn't he's not a ball stopper. He can he can score in the flow of the game, out in transition, whatever. As you said, he's almost seven feet tall. He's turned himself into a great defender. He always makes the proper basketball play. The one thing I think he needs, Stephen A, is to be able to, because he may, always makes the proper play, he's the kind of player that we haven't yet seen impose himself on the game, in, other than the Warriors, where they have an overwhelming advantage. But, like, impose himself on the game to the point that he wills a, a team that's no better than the other team, just as good, to victory, the way a lot of the names that I just mentioned have.